So when Berry looks down over those Vs, I just allow her with my hand to travel forward and, and use her neck to look down at them because we want her to open out through the neck and reach forward. So that is exactly what we want her to allow her to do as she trots over them. So that time, because I knew she was going to look down, I preemptively allowed her to look forward and out. Good. Good girl, Barry. So because uh, when we work the horse over poles, it is much, much more challenging for them. They say that it's, it's really much like going to the gym and for a horse that is not used to that, it can be really quite tiring, not just physically, but mentally. Um, the mental fitness of horses is something we don't always consider. Um, so a lot of the horses, as we've worked through the exercises today have calmed and slowed, but some of them, it's very easy to tip over to that point where they become overloaded and then that is a poor um, point in their training. So really you don't want, if you're working individually on your own over poles, for a session like this, you don't really want to be trotting around the poles for much more than 15 to 20 minutes, even on a fit horse. If your horse is used to doing poles, absolutely fine for you to pick a, a length of time that suits them. But certainly for the first few introductions to these exercises, really feel what your horse is telling you. If they feel tired, just leave it there. It's best not to push things. If you push what you're doing, that's when think accidents are more likely to happen and injuries are more likely to occur. So there's lots and lots of different elements of this exercise. Um, this straight through the centre is the easiest of all the elements. So we're literally just trotting over two single poles. Great for just introducing them, letting them trot through the setup itself because the first time they go through a large setup of poles, they're likely to have a really good look at what's going on. This second line here is the slightly more challenging of the two. So it's working on the rhythm of the horse and also through the centre, they're having to find their own stride. So the more you work through that, the more you will find your horse is able to, to pick its stride and keep a nice stride through that centre portion because we've, they've not got any help as they go through there. Now this V-pole element is brilliant for drawing the horse's attention to the floor and getting them to lift up through the chest. So what Emma's doing with her horse there is doing one of the slightly more challenging exercises, then going back to an easier exercise, then going to a challenging exercise again, so that she's continually varying the difficulty of what she's doing. Because Pointy is uh, just a year off the track, she wants him to have a, a good positive experience and yes, build up some of his strength, but also not get overfaced or get worried by what he's doing. It's really easy in these big grids for to overface the horses and worry them. So it's really important that the first time you do it, you pick the easiest routes out of all of them, rather than going straight into the more difficult curved lines. So there Emma is taking one of the slightly more difficult routes where she's coming into a single pole and then exiting through the fan. Now through the fan line, the horse really has to close up through the underside of the body and bend through the ribs. And here she's doing the three poles and then out through those poles where she has to really close up his underside. So that's a brilliant line to do for this sort of horse at the stage in training that he's in, where he's just learning what all of these things are and we're trying to improve his balance and rhythm through all of the exercises. And here she's made a decision to turn to the right so that he doesn't become predictive of what he's doing. So um, the beauty of the centre area is that we can make a choice to go to virtually any of the exit routes out of the exercise to make it easier or harder. All of the different exercises work on a different thing. So there's nothing that encourages any stiffness in the body. It's all about building up the horse's rhythm, suppleness, core strength. And there she just went represented through that exercise because he just had a little look at it the first time, which is perfect.
Good girl. Good. So when we lunge the horse over poles, it's also really important that we allow them to have a look down and what they're looking at so that they can see working over their back nicely. It's tempting to use gadgets when we're lunging horses and those absolutely have their place in horses that need them. But when we're working over complex pole exercises, we actually want the horse to use their body to the fullest capability. If they've got training aids on, pessoas, side reins, they lose the ability to be able to do that. And they lose the ability to use their body to its fullest capability. So we see how Misty reaches right forward with her nose. And we want that nose to come out in front of the vertical so that the neck can be used to its fullest capability and how she uses her chest to lift her up into the air. Come. Good, and encourages nice activity through the back. Now, if she had a training aid on in front of her, she can't reach out her nose that far. There's no training aid that allows that to happen. And it's really important that the horse, particularly on the lunge, when we're trying to work them so that they're free over their back and they can use their back to its fullest capability, it's really important that we don't tie them down into things that stop that from happening. We want her to, to really reach over and use her back to its fullest capability. Good. Good girl. So there, she just says, I'm a bit tired now and I really need to walk. And again, if she says to me that she's finding it hard and she needs to rest, I, I listen to that and I'll let her have a little walk. She might need to sneeze and clear things out. If I'd have forced her into carrying on, she's gonna get grumpy with me about that and she's not gonna to want to do the exercise. And I really wanna encourage a positive experience with her going over these poles. This is particularly important for horses that are in rehabilitation from injury, because if they're injured, they're gonna have had some pain in the body at some time. So it's important that the horse learns that they can be worked without pain and discomfort. If she is saying to me that she doesn't really want to do the exercise, it might well be because it is causing some pain or discomfort, and I don't want her to be in a position where that's what's going on. Good girl. So when I'm walking her again, I'm encouraging her to reach out in her neck and lift up over her back. Good girl. That's a good girl. So with this exercise, because we're on a lunge line, there are a couple of three routes that we can take, but you have to just be careful about where your feet are in comparison to the exercise so you don't fall over any poles. Good girl. Walk on. Good girl. So for a horse that might be in walk rehab, this is a nice little line. So I've shortened the three poles here up to a walk stride. Good girl. That's it. Now we don't want her to have too much of a lethargic walk. So we ask her to walk on, just so that she's got a little bit more movement because we don't want her to be loping along because that's not gonna do her muscles any good. Walk on. Good girl. There's a good girl. That's it. That's a better walk now. Come. Good girl. So with a horse that's coming back into, um, into, into lunging work or into ridden work, it's quite good to work on some transitions and things on the lunge to encourage their um, responsiveness. So we might ask Misty to trot. Trot. Come. Good. Oh, oh. And then bring her back to a walk to walk over some of the exercise. And trot on, then ask her to trot again after. So this is going to improve her ability to react to what I'm asking her to do. Oh, oh. Good, nice. Come, trot on. And we see as I ask her to do the exercise more, she starts to relax further over the back. Oh, oh. good. Trot on. And becomes more responsive to the aids. So I'm always encouraging her to reach out through the nose 
and stretch out over the back. Whoa. So that time we took the trot transition slightly closer to where we wanted her to, to walk so that it's again further sharpening up her reactions. 